Hello, mate. Can you hear me? Just uh, let me know if the sound is correct. If if you can hear me. Oh, hello, John. Hey, hey. what's what's up? <laughs> what's up? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, cool. Uh, I think your staff is trying to open your camera. Oh, uh, um, no, I I think I accidentally play, put it the wrong uh, play. The wrong button, I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, is there any way to fix it or something? No. I'll just, I'll just close it. Okay. It doesn't, doesn't bother me. <laughs> so, I guess now uh, everyone can hear you in the, li in the live stream, or I think. I think so, if okay. my volume is up. Okay. Because my voice is not like on x -Bit. Mm. Right side where, the, where the sound comes out. Uh -huh. so uh, where you control now. Okay, Lozano says his voice, your voice is a bit low, but um, maybe that's. I have it in maximum, so let me see. Uh, you can you can max maximize me on the on the mm. sound mixer, like on uh, in Windows. Um. Where you, where you move the like you click on mixer, you click on the sound icon. Yeah. The mixer. And they have like a few applications, and you can uh, 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 oh, yeah. slide up. Maybe and okay. I think it's this one. Uh, Lozano, let me know if you can hear him better now. Just, just be careful to not blow people's ears. <laughs> that, that happens a lot yeah. in my live stream. <laughs> yeah, it it seems there is also some uh, connection issue, but yeah, he says it's uh, better now. Okay. It's better now. Yeah. <laughs> hey! <laughs> That's cool. How's it going? This is the first time we're talking, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, we have hear uh, each other voice in live streams, but uh, directly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, with my English, uh, it's a little difficult. Dude, your English is fine. <laughs> nah. Your English is fine. I have made a worst. <laughs> Like myself, right? <laughs> no, no, you speak uh, all right. So, yeah. It's like those jokes, like, like, per like uh, speaking perfect English people, and they'll and they'll be like, "Oh, excuse me for my exquisite yeah. English. <laughs> it's not very, very good." Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, like, when I, you. when I went to London, uh, uh, the the previous year uh, and uh, I was talking with, yeah. with some uh, local people uh, I mm -hmm. could barely understand their English even though they they had uh, they were speaking perfectly so I had uh, I had better luck understanding uh, strange uh, accents rather than the <laughs> super good English uh, yeah because it's oh my god yeah. like the tea. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> hello family it's so hard <laughs> uh, I just got in and we're already being racist, but uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah. it's just joking. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know, it, like British is so, uh, like w when I, s I was coming back to Japan, I went through British Airways, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't feel the urge, like I had to fight against myself to not like start like trying to be uh, like saying English uh, fuck yeah. talking English <laughs> with British accents yeah like, <laughs> I'm just like what am I doing like no stop it <laughs> like instead of no I would say no yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like fucking yeah, no I, I guess it's better it's better to <laughs> to talk as you can and uh you know, like in my brain, I was thinking maybe they'll understand me better mm. if I try to speak the same like the same accent yeah. as they. But it doesn't matter. Like you can speak normally and they understand you perfectly. Yeah, 
Um, I am uh, 24 and soon I will be 25 uh, circumcisor. Holy <laughs> circumcis- shit, really? <laughs> Hello, Roku. <laughs> When when do you have birthday? Um, it's at twenty uh, eighth of May. Twenty eighth of May. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. I I am um, I did it not long time ago, second of March. Mm. So mm. you are how old are you? I can't remember. Like, I'm twenty four. I just 24. became twenty four. Uh, You're uh, one year older than me. Mm. Yeah, but let's say we're almost. Uh, At the similar age. <laughs> mm. Except I sound only 10 years younger. Yeah. That's the only difference. <laughs> Let's see. Mm. I have been painting uh, seriously since uh, 2008. Uh, circumcisor. Really? <laughs> yeah. Since, since then? Yeah, I. I thought you you were painting for less longer. No, I I mean I started the sketchbook at uh, 2007. It. Uh, I stopped it at some point, and then at 2008 I said, "Okay, now I will be serious about this." And yeah, yeah. you got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I started only in 2010, January. <laughs> it's it, is this a toast or something <laughs> like toast? Yeah, it's it's a toast. <laughs> yeah. It's looking good. But, so um, you, it's you, my personal personal <laughs> cooker. <laughs> you improved uh, yeah. really fast uh, for that amount of time. So uh, that's uh, amazing. Uh, I I'm not so sure about that, but I mean, there's I, I, like look at Algen Flager. He's yeah. been like super crazy, and mm. it took him three years. <laughs> you know. Well, he did hardcore training, I guess. Yeah, he did like <laughs> no, <laughs> no life whatsoever. Yeah. Just painting for three years, closed. Mm. Of course, but uh, I'm I'm trying to have a life as well. Yeah, you know? I, I think a, a good balance is important. And anyway. yeah, you have to, yeah. you have to, because like you will burn out and yeah. like you will quit. Exactly. You want to quit if you. Mm. You don't want that. You want to enjoy painting. You don't want to. If you want to have like feel like you have just another job, then you might as well just do another job, mm. and it would be easier. Yeah, exactly. No problem, yeah. Mikal. Balance. <laughs> yeah, try to balance it as much as you can. Uh, and uh, when we share such info in these live streams and stuff, uh, we hope that. Uh, We can make this journey a little more enjoyable, so um, you don't worry about uh, doing inefficient study and burning out uh, easily. So yeah, yeah. A lot of people think that uh, by doing some uh, any kind of study without thinking, you can improve, but uh, you will be tired because you will not see that much uh, results. Uh, results. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Hello, I mates. wish I would have known half of what I knew today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When I started out, I mean, I can't complain because I had, like, compared to like older people, like I still had the creams and daggers, mm. and they've helped a lot. So there was a lot of guidance as well. I mean, still compared to today, there was a lot less, but um. But I, you know, I can't, I can't complain. Like yeah. I had it easier than the old, older guys, uh, and I could have understand things faster. But yeah. still, studying was very, mm, it was and is still a very uh, mysterious kind of mm. like what, what is the best approach and Definitely. and you know what is the best for you. Uh, yeah, and it, it's, it's still uh, something that that people. We yeah, also good. listen a lot of, uh, I mean, we get a lot of information and uh, sometimes uh, if we if we mm-hmm. forget about the fundamentals, we keep uh, filling our brains with such things and uh, we can't find the essential part of it. And so we become a little confused. So, I mean, we had a lot of, a lot of resources, both me and you, uh, from the forums and stuff. But uh, I think we couldn't, uh, we weren't able to understand the the essential parts of this um, 
Yeah. Like we were listening yeah. mostly to uh, some superficial technical stuff and uh, things like that, and mm-hmm. less about fundamentals. Yeah. But uh, f- I, we, I think, we got them by books and stuff, reading some theory. And uh, that's the problem. Yeah, people don't want to read. Yeah. I definitely don't like, like, like. I don't know. I'd rather be painting than, than reading. But, um, yeah, but definitely the, there are some. I, I mean, I, ch- I changed. <laughs> I'm talking about like back then. I I hated reading, mm. uh, unless it was comics. <laughs> but maybe well, the, now I enjoy because I understand. Yeah, maybe there should be some uh, uh, book on fundamentals, more like a comic work. Uh, <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe people uh, are reading this uh, how to draw like Marvel characters. Uh, and it is uh, like a comic <laughs> work, like <laughs> few words, big font, <laughs> font, font size. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's see some. Um, no, I'm not working for uh, Applebot yet. I will try to improve some more. Um, what What did he say? Uh, uh, some question if I am working about uh, Applebot. Um, oh, okay. Did he answer to you? Uh, yeah. But um, I have to keep pushing some things. Eventually, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I, nope. I will keep up. So you don't need improvements. <laughs> I mean, you. I mean, I understand what they're trying to do. Uh, what they're trying to say. Mm. It's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, you don't need them. I was just gonna talk about that perspective comic book for artists. I loved that book because oh. of that. It's like a comic. It's a comic book yeah, explaining well, perspective. I'm not sure I have heard about this. I I, I have because it's wow. where I got most of my perspective cool. from. <laughs> but uh, it's very very nice. Mm-hmm. I, I really like it. Okay, let me see some questions. Um, which pages do you recommend to find jobs? Um, I think uh, there is some new uh, site concept art jobs that contains freelance jobs and stuff. Um, you can find it in Facebook or something. Also, you keep posting your stuff in DeviantArt. Maybe you can find some small filler jobs <laughs> if you are like me. <laughs> <laughs> the um, ones that you don't want to have. Uh, what else? Um, well, Applebot found me through uh, DeviantArt. Yeah. So, so I guess it's a good place to have your work. It's, um, it's kind of rare, but uh, there are going to be bigger companies looking there. I don't, I don't think they look anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't have to anymore. I guess they were also taking uh, CG Hub, uh, but now it doesn't Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exist. They were more on CG Hub, actually, mm. but now there's no CG Hub. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> yeah, they say they would create something. So yeah, they're gonna make something. What else? I'm curious. There are a lot of sites to find uh, jobs. Uh, in case you search about freelance, otherwise you can target uh, a company, uh, tailor your portfolio towards that company, and uh, send them send them an email or application. Um, yeah, if you if you are anything like me, that. In the very, very beginning, when you're really not that good and you just want some kind of artistic job, but it doesn't have to be related to illustration. What I used to do is go to this website called freelancer.com. Yeah. I think, I, I, I don't know if it's still up or not. Uh, yeah, I think I, it, is, uh, it is. Yeah. And I got most of my jobs until mm-hmm. I got good enough yeah. from there. Uh, me- you know, there's small pay, small paid, uh, medium paid. Uh, it's it's mostly medium and small mm-hmm. payments, and you not always get the job because you kind of have to beat it, and you have to find like yeah. nice ways to, to get their attention. And... Uh, yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah. like that's where I got my kind of like just small money, like pocket money. You had to pay yeah. to in freelancer dot com. You had to pay to to be able to take part, or no? Uh, ah, so it was free. I can't no. remember. Yeah, yeah, it one hundred percent free. I mean, you could pay, 
if uh, for example if you wanted your comments to be at the top because mm -hmm. there's so many yeah. people posting right so something um, like extra for uh, pay for some promotion or stuff yeah yeah mm. paying for promotion for the clients to see your posts for you know for a bunch of more things yeah. but you know I never paid for it and in fact I got a client that you know uh, thanks to him I got enough to even visit Japan yeah so you know you can get some nice and it was the first time I visited Japan but you know you can get some like nice payment yeah jobs, of course like iPhone. Uh, after some uh, uh, after some after some works uh, your clients will keep suggesting you to other projects so it's a kind of chain reaction um, yeah, and now the website is done like this. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't back then, but every time you finish uh, a project, you know they they rate you, and if you're always uh -huh. good, you have a really nice rating. Yeah. So. And the more, sometimes you'll do like smaller jobs so that you get the ratings. People and you can get... trust you, so. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I don't know. It, I never really talk about this because it's not I mean it's artistic related mm -hmm. it's really like what we want to do obviously the yeah. best would be if you tell like Costas was saying how should I call you yeah Costas, Costas yeah Costas <laughs> Constantinos is the same as Costas so call me Costas no so. I know it's just short <laughs> short version yeah but yeah like Cost Costas were saying was saying like tailor your Mm -hmm. your portfolio to a company you want to work for and you know the easier way is to you know uh, build your way up mm -hmm. uh, you can start with smaller companies mm -hmm. uh, that they're easier to target and then climb up the ladder yeah, you or know... you can just be like like some big guys like stay in the basement for <laughs> yeah, two three definitely. years and then come out and get all yeah. the big jobs I, I was uh, working in the beginning, I was working, uh, you know, on volunteer, volunteer uh, projects with small indie teams mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. so I started like that. Maybe, maybe I thought it will push me, it will force me to push harder at some point. Um, I think it helped somehow, but I'm not sure if I can suggest it to everyone, like if you are in college maybe yeah. to to start uh, working it, it all depends on your needs yeah exactly um, let's see yeah. uh, that painting um, with a woman with red hair sitting in front of some big green leaves how long does it take uh, it that one it took um, uh, around like five, five hours or something um, the idea I used there was similar to what I'm doing here, pushing the light areas uh, with uh, uh, either white and then bringing on some color, uh, and pushing the dark areas with black and uh, the ambient influence, the ambient color influence on the shadows. And uh, after I had some rough image, I then uh, worked uh, further the modeling. So. I smoothed, I worked on the edges and uh, smoothed out areas and um, it may seem like uh, it needed a lot of work but uh, that's not true, <laughs> it's an illusion I guess. Uh, so I could smooth here the face and uh, I can then draw some details and it would be almost over. Um, so that's why the, the sketching stage is very important. Um, you put down the necessary elements and so the artwork comes down faster. Uh, hold on, I'll be right back. Give me okay. just five minutes. Okay. Yeah, be right back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Fenris, uh, Debian Art might. Um, might not be a great site, but uh, uh, I don't think you have to lose anything. So try to appear also there. Maybe some good connections will uh, pop out from this. 
you don't you can't expect a lot of about uh, feedback from either from DeviantArt but uh, be there also I guess Yeah, I have seen that uh, art station site. Uh. Hello, Joshua. Cassandra, my favorite artist. Uh, I think uh, the biggest influence influence is Craig Mullins. Um, then uh, my favorites are Justin Sweet, Kos Konyotis, uh, Vans Kovacs, uh, a lot more. Like I also like Jamie Jones uh, and whatever you can imagine. <laughs> But uh, the biggest uh, influence is Craig Mullins. And the styles of uh, Justin Sweet, Van Kovacs, and Koskonyotis, and of course the the old masters. Yeah, from old masters, uh, I think Sargent is one of my favorite. Um, a lot more. Every every one of the old masters he, he, he has something inter interesting. Uh, you can even uh, um, check the impressionist and see how they 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 tried to do something else rather than focusing on form matters. Like uh, they tried to to play a lot with color, and so every one of these movements have something gave something to art. Yeah, just so I agree. Um, Cassandra, no, I am not married. Uh, I am a professional artist, uh, but uh, a professional freela freelance artist. But now I try to approach uh, bigger clients because uh, I have been working a lot on Kickstarter projects and other indie ones. Um, No, it's my main job. My main income comes from this. But as I said, I have to approach a lot more uh, bigger clients because uh, the situation with taxes here in Greece now it's a little uh, tough. Um, they keep a lot of the money, or a lot of the income, so I have to find a good balance. Uh, I guess that's uh, one of the problems of freelance, but. Uh, um, The more experience you get, the better it gets. Thanks, mate. But uh, definitely the most important aspect is uh, to keep up improving because uh, that's uh, what that's the most important aspect. That will give you more jobs and you will keep uh, moving forward. Sorry, by the way, sorry if I'm missing a lot of comments in the chat. It's just it's the first time I'm doing such a combination, so <laughs> I'm losing the track of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, if you check the the live stream, the yes yesterday's live stream. Uh, I think you will understand the logic behind this um, and if you can't directly work like that there is uh, we have been through all the steps like the sketching and stuff 
and this is actually as if I am thinking as if I was drawing right now but instead of pencil and line I'm using these marks uh, values and stuff <laughs> yeah I can't remember exactly the design of him, but we can do something with it. Of course, uh, you could use uh, references to to be able to introduce more details and be more sure about how this uh, interior of a ship could look like or something. Um, but that, that's the way. You don't have to allow the reference to dictate your work. Um, so you care only about using it for getting information. Hello, Isalor. Um, how much time do you usually spend on commission? Um, it depends on the project. Uh, I have some projects that include uh, both concept art uh, generation and uh, then a, an illustration of that concept. And uh, it depends on the cycle of, like, for example, I will do some sketches and then I will have to send it to the art director and um, all this back and forth uh, creates the delay uh, other than that the, the production is not very very uh, time spending um, but yeah I don't work only in one project that's why things are getting a little more busy but uh, I will sooner or, or later I will avoid doing simulta simultaneous works um, when you understand the, the essential parts of an image uh, uh, you become faster so time is not that much of a problem but uh, it's a problem of the client for example if he, if he allows you to, stay, to, to work on a piece uh, as much time as you want you can push it a lot further Hello, Ben. <laughs> cool idea, Abdel. Okay, let's see.
Um, yeah, um, let's see. Um, there is something. HSB is great uh, when you focus. Welcome back, mate. Joshua, um, uh, if you, uh, HSB is great uh, if you focus on uh, on values, um, and it can also work if you do colors. But uh, with RGB, you after you understand the logic of it, how to how to 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 calculate the bright the value from the three sliders. Um, and after you learn how to adjust the saturation uh, by by reading L Lean Run's tutorial, I don't know if you know it. Um, it's better RGB is better because you can uh, imagine how the light source color uh, you can see the mix source a lot better. You uh, you will imagine that uh, if you have a warm uh, light source um, uh, in your eye. The, the red uh, cones and the green cones will be higher I mean, uh, how to say it mm, it's more, uh, it's closer to nature anyway RGB sliders uh, rather than the HSB which is more uh, painting directed and so uh, if you check some images with a color picker uh, while utilizing the HSB sliders you will see that uh, when you move towards the shadows the the saturation goes up usually it's not a standard thing but uh, you can make some research on it and um, but we have to, we know that uh, saturation uh, alters itself because of um, of mixture so if I have a color this color here uh, and uh, I go in shadow uh, this color will be affected by uh, reflected light that uh, reaches uh, the plane which contains this color so you will uh, adjust the layers uh, and reduce the saturation of it because of mixture with another color uh, but also if you have um, if you have for example red and then you have a, a warm um, a red light source or something it, the saturation will increase um, but in HSB it, it seems a little strange but yeah. It's yeah it's a little I'm not sure I'm not yet very sure but uh, RGB finally seems a lot more logical so yeah it is Yeah. But I like doing it. Like, even though I understand it, I still prefer to have like my color wheel plug in, and uh, I don't know I, I like being in full control. So, like right now, I have my my magic picker. So mm -hmm. it has a color wheel, and you can select it to have the HSB or the RGB. And mm -hmm. uh, the cool thing is that you can have. Since this is on the plug in, have both. So you have I have the wheel, the HSV, and the RGB all on the on the sides. Yeah, I, what I, I like to do is like pick pick a cool, um, like a local color, and then mm -hmm. just shift the RGB towards uh, you know a tint. You yeah. know, for example, if I have like sunlight coming in on, on the skin, uh, then I can just select the skin color and just slide it a little, a little bit towards either red or yellow or both mm -hmm. uh, if I wanted to make it warmer yeah I, and I remember that great uh, mechanism that uh, that magic picker has about uh, maintaining the value that's really important. oh the, the tunnel yeah yeah that's the tone lock mm -hmm. I bought it because of that yeah that's great it's after I upgrade to PS6 I think I will also take it oh which one are you using now? Yeah, CS5. <laughs> but you can use, yeah, you can use it on CS5. It works on CS5. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't know. I will. So, I will. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can buy it right now if you want. Cool. Awesome. And, mm. and it, it it'll work. Yeah. You don't need CS6. I was using it already from CS5 when I was testing it. Cool. I I will purchase it later. Yeah. Oh, hey Devin. Hello, mate. 
but um, yeah, I like having I don't know, I, I like having many options. Mm. It's one thing I I started enjoying, which was total opposite when I started painting. When I started painting, I hated changing. Like I always stuck to one thing. Mm. Uh, but now I really really enjoy like rotating, like everything in general. Yeah, you you have uh, I, more. Uh, I think now you you worry less about other things, and uh, you have uh, free, you have more space in your mind to worry about uh, uh, variations in color and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it's not only about that. Like even like for example, brushes. I I like changing the set of brushes uh, apart from from my one a mm. lot. Yeah. I, I like having that insecurity and like experiment and, mm. and have variation in my in my uh, in my painting. The same goes with, for example, the cursor of like of your uh-huh. mouse. You can change it on Photoshop. Yeah, from, I, you, you make know, it the, like a target uh, thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you even yeah, play with that, this. There's like. <laughs> yeah, because. Every time you change something, it gives mm-hmm. you like a fresh view. Yeah, I think of that's it. true. Like for a long time, I used to to paint without, you know, I there was no icon of the brush. Uh-huh. There, there was only the icon of like it was like a little paintbrush icon. Uh-huh. Uh, but you couldn't see the, you know, the brush size. Uh-huh. And what? Yeah, yeah. You can see the brush tip. And what that was making is you would see when you paint you would see the shape of the paint rather than focusing on mm-hmm. the shape of the tip of your uh, brush, yeah. right? Makes sense. And you could see the edges a lot a lot clearer as well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I do that. Like, I change back and forth you know, whenever I'm, cool, yeah, I'm tired. I, I haven't played, played with this. Uh, definitely. I don't me. have to. It's just ah. me being weird, really. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Uh, maybe sometime you will find something really helpful by using them. Uh, that, that's how we move forward anyway. Uh, we keep playing with yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mainly do it because it just gives me a fresher like, mm. eye. Like, once you get used to something, you kind of go on autopilot. Or at least I do. Yeah. And, and because of that, then... You know, I, I mix a lot of things because I'm not thinking about it. So I kind of force myself to change my environment yeah, so that I think about true. things all the time. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's important because we fall a lot into this trap, like doing a subject several times and uh, we think that we start learning some things. But uh, mm-hmm. by the time we, we have a new challenge, we think, oh, okay, now why does uh, why why it doesn't look good now? <laughs> like, and you <laughs> have you have new stuff to learn, eh? so um, you trigger yourself to go deeper and find new stuff. Uh, so it's good yeah. to keep researching anyway. Like, like for example, now I'm painting. I got a job where I gotta paint something super cute. Uh, what girl. super cute? Huh? <laughs> yes, super cute. Like like a cute girl mm. around like cute animals and it's a cute environment. And cute, cute, cute. And I, <laughs> I yeah, don't do that. you are watching. Maybe you will watch some uh, uh, these Ghibli characters. How we say them? Like uh, uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's that's who, where I'm <laughs> referencing oh. Ghibli. Mm. Exactly. Um. But I'm enjoying, like I'm enjoying the process of it. I don't want to paint something like this at the time, but like like frequently, I, I'm much better off with being this time and, and that's yeah, it. I, want to paint I think I more cute things. I keep finding uh, really interesting things in uh, these anime kind of images, uh, and this uh, the simplicity they have and the amazing drawing skills. It's something that. It may seem uh, simple, oh, yeah. yeah. But when you try to do, it's like, oh, that's hard actually. It's uh, strange. Oh, no. What yeah. I meant is like it's still realistic. Yeah. But exactly. everything is cute. Mm. Like it's got to look. It's realistic, but 
uh, not the way I paint, but the theme of things is cute, you know, yeah. cute animals and things like that. Yeah, so but, uh, you also expand the your design horizons, like you you play with your <laughs> yeah, designs. For sure. you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. We always uh, no, you learn. You live and you learn. Yeah, I, I like not not being in my comfort zone. Yeah. It's something I, I used to hate, mm. but I I only don't like when I'm in a deadline. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the only that's, that's the only difference. I, I like challenges and creating things that I'm not used to. Mm. Unless I'm in a deadline, then it's horrible because I gotta figure stuff out twice the speed. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> a, that's a little. Um stagnating how they say the the word so, um, yeah, yeah. You, you wanna figure stuff out when you have time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that you, like your brain has time to process it correctly. When you're all the time in speed mode, which which is what I see a lot of people doing, even though they have a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just like go through their studies like super quick. We only think about them. Yeah, well, the problem with me, for example, is that um, by the time I have figured out what I wanted to research, I'm I'm bored of the emails and uh, I want to move forward to new stuff. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, with yeah. work, I'm forced to keep uh, playing Stay. with it. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd I'm, like to see how how your images would look like, like really finished. <laughs> like if you spend three days, because you you do nearly finished images in freaking one sitting, like freaking five hours. Well, I, and so I think, for example, if uh, I could take this sleeve here or something, and um, if uh, even at this stage I could probably create uh, a new drawing of it or fix the shape and imagine as if I was uh, drawing with pencil and so um, we have seen some super detailed uh, draw- drawings from some artists and um, I could prepare uh, such a base uh, that yeah. will include all the vari- uh, all the subtle variations of the values and then uh, apply it with paint or do it directly like that and it will look uh, super detailed so I guess it will be a matter of staying with a piece and keep refining it uh, oh yeah it's, yeah. it's all about refining mm. nothing else like the um, I read it somewhere I don't know who said it uh, one of the big guys like yeah. everything happens in the first 10 to 20 minutes yeah like, exactly like you should that's that's the time you should be really focusing on your on, on your image because yeah. yeah everything happens during that time after that it's just a follow up really yeah, and I um, I also think that's visible in Craig Mullins' works, where you can see some of his high detailed works, uh, but and you can see that he is working uh, on on uh, zoomed in with uh, little strokes following the form as contours and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, he does that a lot. He gets in there and just follows. Yeah, he it's like he would be shading. Yeah, shading with a pencil. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Th- that's uh, that was the main idea that I was searching about connecting uh, uh, drawing with painting, because I I yeah. was watching some paintings uh, uh, of masters, um, and I w- I was having in front of me the the sketch version, the drawing of it, the preparation, and then the final work, and uh, I could see that uh, the brush stroke was exactly the same as their drawing marks and so it occurred to me that uh, it's it, when they paint they think exactly the same but because they don't have the digital tool they didn't have the digital tool they had to prepare it beforehand so they were watching the, their own reference and so they applied the paint in the same uh, way um, but here in, yeah. digi- in yeah. digital, we, the yeah, we can do it all together. I think in digital, it's very fast. Um, yeah, it's like that's another another trap people fall into. Like when you think 
think of it. Uh, I can't remember who said it as well, but someone said, like, if you use Photoshop and just use the brush tool, then you, you bought a very expensive, you know, uh, like you just bought a very expensive yeah. brush. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you gotta make use of the whole digital, mm. like, everything. You know? Yeah, you shouldn't limit yourself um, thinking, oh, I shouldn't do like that. I should follow the the old way. But uh, even if the masters had uh, digital, they would go all crazy, like trying a lot of stuff, not uh, worrying about... Oh, uh, man, yeah. yeah. They would go crazy. <laughs> like, they even, even with traditional stuff, like, they would mix media stuff, like... Yeah. They get physical sands and apply it to the painting that has sand, mm. you know, yeah. like and and the painting already gets like a two-dimensional feeling exactly. to it. They used to do like all crazy stuff like that too, mm. but uh, of course, you know, uh, even though it wasn't much appreciated depending on the times, because you know back then it was all about. Um, uh, like like the positions like mm. who, who is who and who's uh-huh. yeah. and most painters were doing you know paintings because of uh, because of you know commissions of painting someone important yeah most of the and times and religious stuff and back then at the Renaissance um, commissions yeah, from yeah. the church yeah a lot of different stuff. yeah it was, yeah so many churches stuff mm. and like they they weren't really like they weren't painting what they wanted yeah like per se no i think that i i read somewhere that they had um, something like a a guidebook how we say that that uh, it said that it is a crime for example if i can say it like that it is a crime to do to proceed with a painting without uh, preparing without doing some preparation for it like a um, dead colors uh, something like grayscale preparation for example and stuff so they had a rule book wow. for this to be sure that wow. no time would be wasted uh, yeah crazy Holy shit. Yeah. yeah so there you go I didn't know about that <laughs> yeah I think I That's read it crazy. on a on a YouTube video that web academy or something um, Web oh, Art snap. Academy, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, now that I mentioned YouTube, uh, I think uh, it's really helpful to to watch videos about uh, lighting basics. And I, I don't know if people already watch such videos. It they are mostly photography based, but they offer a lot of information about how to to feel uh, your light your lighting in your scenes. You will be able to imagine better how to arrange the lighting um, and the intensity. If you f- follow, for example, a three three point lighting uh, setting um, to arrange your re- reflected light and stuff like that. So yeah, I do. No. I use YouTube almost like Google. Yeah, really. Mm. Just if YouTube for me is like a visual Google. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for anything. Mm. And I really, it, it became super powerful uh, the more, you know, the more people started doing things yeah. on it. You, you guys should definitely check out uh, YouTube for, like, crazy stuff that you think you you wouldn't find. Yeah. You, like, if you would think yourself, you know, you'd say, I'm going to search this on YouTube. You probably think, nah, dude, nothing is going to pop. Like, it's YouTube, right? But you'd be surprised. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, like, totally do it. Like photography stuff, uh, how to set up lighting, yeah. you know, like, like you're saying, and uh, yeah, I've, I've watched a lot about movie stuff. Mm. Oh, and one major important thing, the commentaries. You have all kinds of the commentaries. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You can either find about sub different subject and uh, increase your design. Uh, information the the information you need about uh, different subjects and uh, a lot of stuff to yeah. find on f- fundamental areas so definitely exactly i don't know experiment use i don't know yeah use use any means you don't only have to go to to youtube go to other 
yeah. but not Vimeo mm -hmm. or go to uh, oh yeah Pinterest is a big Pinterest, one but most yeah. of you probably know mm -hmm. um, yeah Tumblr Tumblr like reference wise mm -hmm. god damn Tumblr is like a gold mine yeah I, have, I think I have done some account there but I have to get into it a lot Dude, more. <laughs> yeah, you, sh you should. Like, Tumblr has everything. Hmm. Like, literally everything. Uh, but yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And my main important thing is create your own... Like, it it's something I came to realize. Um, like, create your own um, theories. Even if yeah. they're not right. Definitely. Like really create what you observe, mm -hmm. just create a new whole theory for it, as long as it works. Yeah, we, if it doesn't work, that's it's... great because at some point uh, you will uh, because you reset, you will at some point keep gathering information and you will evaluate it if it is uh, good or bad at the end. So uh, yeah, if it's real or not. Yeah, yeah you gotta test. Like you observe something and you, while you observe it you think re you think of reasons why yeah like something is the way it is yeah but it's and it could, could be right it's, mm. and you could be wrong mm. the the point here is you're actually developing a thought exactly. it's not bound by any book it's, it's it's just you you know i think, think it, it also like, stays with you that idea uh, by the time you find out that uh, your own uh, kind of theory is true um, that will stick with you forever it's like uh, it's bam in your mind inside you will remember it as second nature so uh, because you have created somehow um, it's uh, it really helps a lot yeah, exactly that's looking really cool by the way thanks <laughs> well, uh, of course, uh, concentration is needed everywhere. <laughs> um, and <laughs> that's true. But, uh, the more we know that, uh, as we were saying before, that the initial stages are uh, the most important, um, that's where the concentration part uh, came to into play. Because you have to really keep your mind there. In what are you putting down? Like, um, yeah after you have stabilized your lighting and stuff and then you can somehow feel more free to experiment with details and, and stuff but yeah concentration yeah that, that's why I, like, I, I don't mind I understand when when starting artists and even non-starting artists they they go out of the way, their way and show you know, show us some images, either for mm. critiques or not, and then they're like, oh, it's just a sketch. Yeah. Like, it's just a sketch. Like, a sketch is an idea, mm. which is fine, but when you show me, like, a uh, halfway completed image yeah. uh, with some parts that they're, you know, some parts are clean, some parts are really messy, you know, <laughs> that's, a, that's not a sketch anymore, and it's, it's hard to give advice when some images are so far away because you'd have to change a lot exactly and yeah. this, this is why it's so important to spend a lot of time or as much as you can in the very beginning it's it's very tedious I understand that like it's, it's hard to to like it I I personally came to enjoy it really a lot mm. but uh, it's something that you have to have really a lot of patience to always stay Definitely. as long as you can until everything is perfect and fixed in the beginning so that later on you have this you know, very good foundation like yeah. like a perfect map mm. for how your painting is going to look like in the end it's, it's more enjoyable also at the end because uh, uh, if you don't understand this uh, the importance of this uh, sketching stage, uh, you will not come to realize uh, why you can't. Uh, I mean, 
that uh, that classical question about how do I take a sketch from finish, like uh, how do I refine a sketch, that is uh, an indication of uh, uh, if you continue, if, if some fundamentals are missing, so if you continue to refine uh, uh, the sketch, you, you find uh, some roadblocks uh, in front of you and you don't know how to approach something. That's that's uh, the problem that, that uh, even your foundation is not good. Uh, so you worry later I think how to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say that. Like, I think that it's a lot about, um, like, w when you say refining, yeah. right? Each each single person will think the, like the word refining will mean something different for each mm -hmm. person. I think the important, like, the important thing when someone says refining really means. Um, correcting uh -huh. I think that would be a better way to yeah. like when, when people give either critiques or, or even clients themselves yeah, like, when they say oh can you please keep on refining mm -hmm. uh, like in the beginning of the sketch right like what, what, what does it mean what exactly do you want do you want me to correct more things or do you want me to essentially just render you know yeah. make it more polished yeah, so there, so there's two distinct like things where where you exactly, you gotta yeah. ask yourself and and ask whoever is telling you to, to do that. Yeah. So be because usually uh, if the basics are all okay and the whole composition is uh, um, is accepted by your client and stuff, I think the refining could be uh, like. Uh, Making your shapes uh, more uh, clear and tight. So, clear. yeah, yeah, that's. I think that's the point of it. The the trick is to to know which one is what. <laughs> which so one? So the only way is to really. I'm saying the trick is to know which one does you know the person who's uh -huh. if it's a client. Yeah. You know, which one are they meaning? Yeah. Or yeah. if it's. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if if, if you have need... to change the arrangement or if you simply have to uh, make the shapes more. It's tight. not only that, like yeah. like fixing, like for example, anatomy. You know, mm. um, I I I've, I've came to that to that situation many many times where I'm like confused mm. and like what do you mean? Like, and sometimes it's render wise, sometimes it's to fix something exactly like precisely like for example a leg or or the composition or something. Yeah. Mm. yeah so uh, anyway, I think another good thing of being uh, very loose at the beginning uh, it's that you can um, you can explore your subject without uh, becoming tired. So. At the very beginning, you could explore uh, like uh, different camera yeah. viewpoints and stuff, and so even the client uh, will be more sure. So you avoid the uh, unnecessary revisions or stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. Like you, you don't, be you don't become tied to the. You know, you spend so much time in one single sketch. Yeah. You don't want, you don't want that when you're exploring. Exactly. You want to like explore as much as possible and show possibilities, which I guess is what we call, you know, the thumbnail stage. Yeah, uh, that's what I consider thumbnail when you're just ex exploring the the ideas and compositions. Um, sketch is more like I s I'm set on the idea and I'm starting to fleshing it out. Mm. I'm, I'm starting to to work on it and fix things so that it looks better yeah and and what can i do more to emphasize the idea that i chose uh that's what i consider the sketch phase i don't consider the sketch phase the idea stage so i it's tricky because different people will consider different things you know somebody else will consider the sketch phase the idea phase yeah, I I was I also had the same questions back then, and uh, it uh, I couldn't make sense of how to combine the two. I couldn't connect uh, this. Uh, like I was imagining, I was imagining that uh, 
I I think I didn't knew exactly what the sketch is, so uh, I thought that even if I plan, if I, even if I do a quick a quick sketch somewhere, uh, that uh, when I try to paint, when I try to put it into a painting, uh, I will not be able to follow it. So the whole process seemed uh, unnecessary to me, but uh, that was because I was missing fundamental knowledge, uh, and I guess that's. Uh, yeah. That's probably what is happening when people can't uh, can't find the importance of sketching and thumbnailing. Um, so, hello, it's two Kevin. Things. I I still and I I strongly think that thumbnailing is is the correct term for for the idea stage. Yeah. I just that's that's why thumbnails exist for that sole purpose of rebuilding an idea without you know compromising on it yeah. sketch is already the next step for you know fleshing out an idea while half compromised in it it's still not 100 percent sure mm -hmm. in but at least you made a choice already yeah. um i don't know it makes, that makes more sense to me it might not to you no, no. yeah it, again what... it, it is the the best way to explain that that's exactly the way um, so we have a question about yeah the, the sketches yeah the sketches we can show for approval um, well usually some clients can show to you um, an example of what sketches they expect and um, yeah. Yes, in some of them you can be very loose, but uh, it, it's uh, it's it's more important to you. Like, don't try to make a loose sketch that you personally don't understand, because you will uh, you will become tired. You will try to find uh, a way to create a painting similar to your sketch if you don't know the marks you put uh, down. Um, so make the yeah, sketch. Yeah, another thing yeah. is if you don't. Yeah, if you don't understand the sketch you've done, then most likely somebody else won't. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> yeah. But um, personally, I think that. Um, wait, what was. Let me reread the question again. Uh, then the sketches you guys show for approval are. Yeah. Approval area are you lose. First of all, like, you gotta realize something that everything can be approved. Like. Exactly. Yeah. Um, really. Yeah. Like thumb, thumbnail. You show them thumbnails. A few of them, they'll approve one, and then you show them. Uh, you show them. You know the, the next phase uh, yeah. after the sketch. Mm. It, it'll be approved. You can show an even more cleaner version of that sketch. It will be approved. The next is colors. Uh, you show a few variations if you have time for that. Uh, for for the color. Uh, and that can be approved. Same with values, same with lighting. Like everything can be approved, mm -hmm. literally. So th th that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, it's just that there's stages of approval. It's approval after approval until it's never like you send in the image and it's, it's yeah, and you take approved it through, until yeah. the very end. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to show them a few times to keep. Approval is basically a check. Like it's, it's basically they're giving you the green light. You're going in the right direction. Yeah. Without screwing up too late. Mm. But of course, you have to to have a direction. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't uh, you can't move forward. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think uh, that's uh, Hello, a Kevin. major problem. Yeah, these are some light particles. I I do that often, but. I can uh, make them more subtle later. Um, yeah, even even yeah. even this uh, even this painting at this moment, uh, I could have it as a loose sketch to present, and uh, maybe I could uh, create um, a more detailed version, like uh, lower the yeah. opacity and make some drawing if I have the time, and. Uh, Seems I do that a lot, where yeah. I, I have like a color variation and then a line art mm. next to it, and I'll, I send them both. Yeah. So that I make it really clear the idea, because some things you can only see 
in the sketch phase. Mm. Um, some things you can only see in line art, clear, and some other things you can only see on the color. Yeah, so exactly. I always send them. Yeah. So I guess the important thing is to keep all this in mind so um, you are flexible um, according to the needs you have. You are flexible to use all the, all the tools uh, to your advantage because with line, for example, you you can show more of the detail areas. Um, you can also make this to help you. You will you will uh, mark down some details so that you can have as a guideline. Um, but you don't need to show them if in case you don't want, for example, and. Uh, when you want to refine something, you already have your your plan, um, so you make your life easier. Because uh, without a plan, you you will. It's like how we, they say it, guess or miss, right? or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's. A, I'm liking these questions. I guess can keep asking questions. It's easier than coming up. Mm-hmm. And things on our own, but um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, in, in in what we do. There's a lot of our own uh, interpretations of you know even words. Yeah. Uh, like I was explaining, thumbnailing versus sketch. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one. That's one of the examples. Um, but the main idea is, you know, it's very important with a client client wise uh, communication. Yeah. And not don't presume something like ask and make sure it's it's better to be in brackets annoying and asking a lot of questions to make sure this is what they mean than spending I don't know five hours on something mm. and then they're like oh no that's not what I mean yeah. that's what I meant you know and then there goes your five hours exactly yeah yeah maybe maybe some sometimes uh, uh, we are afraid to ask uh, more questions because we want to avoid the extra work or something <laughs> I don't know you, <laughs> yeah. you, you have done this <laughs> yeah no I understand why like mm-hmm. I've been there I, I don't I don't really care right now like I'll, I'll ask all the questions mm. to be sure but um, before I, I, think I would be always afraid yeah, it's because we have we know how to approach something now, so we are not very much uh, afraid. Like we don't have so much questions as about if we will be able to to finish the work. I mean, uh, it's not that much challenge uh, at this moment uh, as it used to be back then. Mm. Yeah. So I I even keep doing work uh, with uh, post-apocalyptic cars at the moment, and so. Uh, if I did this same work uh, back then, I would be freaked out. Uh, I w- and yeah, I, I couldn't understand all the form uh, s- stuff in my head and stuff. Uh, and I was, I was yeah, going to Yeah, because it's worry. all fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Hello, number. It's, it doesn't matter. The subject doesn't really matter. I mean, mm. it does design-wise. Like, you got to yeah. understand design. But painting, like painting something... Mm-hmm. Everything is the same as long as you know the material. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and how it reacts. Uh, apart from that, you know, light will generally react the same in all in all uh, shapes. You know, mm. it's just the material changes the way light, ref- you know, l- light reacts on it. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing. But apart from that, you know, you just have one thing to worry, pretty much, which is design. Exactly. Yeah, after some point that becomes the major, uh, the more time spent uh, becomes at this design uh, stage. Um, yeah, I spend a lot more time yeah. designing than worrying my rendering. I'm pretty <laughs> confident on my, on my rendering at the moment. It's no. not the best, but... Number alone says, uh, who is the girl you are talking to, Costa? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. But anyway, yeah. Um, 
again, it's, it's always, it, it all comes down to the same thing. Always fundamentals. Yeah. And no matter what, no matter what you're painting. So if you guys have more questions, uh, it will help us uh, come with more stuff to talk about. What do you do when you're not painting? I paint. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> In I your go, mind. I go I out, uh, try to move a little away from the PC. So if I didn't have to paint at all at this uh, period, I would try to stay away from the PC as much as possible. Or maybe see some movies and stuff, because it's been so long. Um, like go know. to the cinema, or you mean just, uh, just watch Even cinema or with it? friends and stuff, but uh, I, I think the last movie I saw uh, was uh, Inception and... Uh, uh, that's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, it was uh, on a lucky... How to say it? It... Um, I, I hadn't planned it. Like... Uh, oh, okay. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have to to spend some time to play some games a little. I, I don't mean to, to burn out on games or stuff or movies. Because we have to keep adding elements to our visual library. And um, yeah, I, I freaking love watching yeah. uh, watching movies and playing games. <laughs> yeah, it's important. <laughs> if I could do it all the time, <laughs> I would. But <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Well, it depends how you look at things as well. Like mm. if you go to watch a movie and you're just enjoying it mindlessly, then I don't think much is gonna stay in your head unless yeah. you have a really good memory. Mm. But if you're paying attention to everything else. Um, like when you're, it's it's that thing where when you rewatch a movie, yeah, you uh, see that you <laughs> already, yeah, yeah, that you already previously watched, then yeah. you're gonna start noticing a lot more things and paying attention to everything else apart from the story. Exactly. Okay, let's see. We have a question about uh, how do you think about values when painting. Do you choose co uh, what values when painting? Do you choose colors uh, for objects based on the values you want, or you just paint what you like? Values and colors, hard, hard. Um, okay, let's see. Um, it's um, if I if I paint directly with color. Um, I will I will keep in mind the the local uh, the local value color of what I am painting. For example, here I have decided that uh, this would be a red um, a red cloth or something. And uh, after you have uh, decided about that, you are thinking about uh, how this uh, object will appear under uh, under the lighting you have in your scene. Um, and that's why go going with grayscale is a lot easier. Uh, but um, to answer your question, then you think how to you will alter this color when you move towards the light, and uh, how you will alter it when you move towards the shadow. Um, other than that, in uh, about its uh, its value attribute, um, you have to take care of uh, maintaining the ratio between uh, light and shadow. Uh, you can read about this in, uh, in Creative Illustration, in the tone section of uh, Creative Illustration of Loomis, um, that uh, the ratio from one material, from its light side to the shadow side of the same material, it has to be uh, maintained in all of the other materials in your scene. However, uh, there will be some um, uh, variations in, because of uh, uh, reflected light. Mm. Yeah. Thanks for doing this, uh, Michal. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know, John, if you have your own uh, opinion on this uh, question. Like, uh, uh, how do you think about values and painting? Do you choose colors for objects based on the values you want, or you just paint what you like? Values and colors are hard. Uh, well, it's like this if you put value and color like together each color has its own local value mm. so yeah whenever you place a, like a value down for example a very dark uh, hold on ah yeah like a very dark again value is perceived with uh, like when it's compared like value alone if you have like a white white background and one square of whatever value you know like let's say dark gray in comparison to the white background that for example wouldn't material wise that wouldn't be possible to be uh, for example porcelain because porcelain is is um, is light it's light mm -hmm. value but you know that same dark gray if the environment would be if the background would be for example black pure black mm. and that same dark grey uh, would be st still the same uh, it could be perceived as porcelain and there's different light lighting conditions yeah uh, that's that's the first thing you gotta you gotta understand the value on itself uh, you know when I say dark grey it's it's only because when when it's compared to another or or you know another value or when it's compared to a range of values and and light setup um so that's the first thing mm -hmm. uh and understanding you know each color has its own own value as well that you know that that will help Mm. Yeah, what else? Uh, no, I think after after the after someone has totally understand how the values move, uh, in order to avoid uh, for a while to avoid thinking uh, about local value, um, because in the end it's uh, it's it's a combination of three things. For example, every object, uh, you can imagine it as if it was uh, white, for example, as if it was of white material. Um, here, by having this in your mind, you will understand that uh, you, you have to take care of, uh, of, uh, of the overall uh, effects of light on a form. So, you, I think the old masters did that, they were studying uh, old plaster, uh, how we say them, sculpts. Uh, monochromatic sculpts so that they they wouldn't need to care about uh, texture and color uh, and uh, unnecessary variations in local values and to understand how the light works on form after that point you can bring into play the whole idea of local values so uh, since you, you will have good in your mind that how light works on forms uh, you will then introduce the local value differences and the only thing you will have to take care at that point will be to maintain this relationship between the materials uh, the same difference from light yeah. to shadow uh, and after that you will introduce color into play and about color we have uh, the variations on it uh, because of mixture and you will be alright uh, just follow this uh, uh, hierarchy how to say um, yeah like keep keep your value what it really comes down to basically a summarized version of what you said just group your values yeah and keep it that way um, yeah grouping and, and you know whatever you do whatever you do the relationship won't be broken as long as you keep the group values the same Yeah, grouping will make it more understandable. Uh, okay. I guess the next question will be, what is grouping values? <laughs> yeah, it's like compressing uh, all the values uh, in some... 
maybe we can Rich. say not worrying about the in between of values and so worrying only about their uh, essential parts like uh, light uh, area uh, combining together all the planes that are facing uh, the lights uh, that are facing that that belong to the light and uh, com- uh, grouping all the planes that are uh, that belong to the say, say shadow area um, and moving from there uh, You can also combine all the planes uh, that belong to the half tones, uh, so you can create this uh, three-value system um, for yeah. each material. And from there, you can keep uh, adding in betweens. And uh, it's uh, you can imagine it uh, as you are watching, for example, uh, some anime screenshot or something that you have uh, flat values because they group things together. They don't uh, care about in between, so they say all these areas will be a flat shadow tone, for example. Um, yeah. they, they, I guess they... I think it's... Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I think it's also like grouping values mean that the range of, of values only go from... Okay, you have a range of values from 1 to 10. 1 is the lightest, yeah. 10 is the darkest. Um, w- the way I think about it is, for example, going back to the porcelain example, I would think it goes the the group values of the porcelain it could go from one to four, so very light to kind of like a a light gray uh, or almost like to a medium gray, but it wouldn't go darker. Uh, you know, generally speaking, of course, depending on on the light setup, everything changes. But, you know, the same way, like, the leather would be then, uh, I don't know, an 8 to 10, or it could be uh, from a 5 to an 8 uh, in a value scale, you know. Again, 1 being the lightest and 10 being, being the darkest. Mm-hmm. So that's how I also think about grouping values to the, to the objects, you know. Yeah. Pers- pers- usually it's like, uh, yeah, personally I think, like, usually for around three to four values, value range within each object. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would consider that like grouping, you know, and you have like a limit, uh, like a, yeah, a limit of, of values mm. uh, to go from. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's really good because you don't, uh, it lets you avoid losing track of your value structure and makes things more understandable yeah 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 yeah, yeah. everything is much more readable mm-hmm. yeah. yeah there's yeah gotta study <laughs> we all do study, study, study. And that's the natural way to to increase your speed anyway. Um, in case someone is wondering how someone can increase, uh, can become faster at something, it's because it's exactly because you know what stuff you have to put down, and by these simplifying uh, methods like grouping values and, and stuff, you can uh, put down all the important info immediately, and then find several ways to to increase that uh, to to quickly to quickly create the in betweens for example when we soften some uh, uh, areas it's like we if even if we had two flat values and we knew that the change of planes between these uh, it's gonna be smooth then we smooth and this uh, we smooth these edges uh, We smooth it out, and we cl- we immediately create all the necessary range at that point, um, maybe for the light area and stuff. So it's a, like a, a proof that uh, the in betweens are not the important stuff. I guess. Yeah. Oh, any more questions, mates? Feel free to. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, yeah all, although these no, are, uh, these I think all these uh, answers uh, go connect together because they are fundamental uh, stuff. So yeah, yeah. Any kind of question will go back to this, I guess. Mm-hmm. People still like to ask me, regardless. Yeah. But it's also good to talk, talk about it. Like, I don't get that there was many chances to talk about fundamentals with people, unless I'm in my in my own live stream. Every time I talk with someone else, we just talk about whatever. But um, yeah, I, I like talking about it because kind of forces you to refresh your memory. Yeah. Although you should be thinking about it all the time whenever you're painting. But it's easy to to go into out of pilots. Uh, yeah. Always study. You have a question for you, John. If you have ever been in Greece. In Greece? No, I would like to. I would like to visit Greece. It's like a cool place. Like a very nice vacation place. Yeah. At some point I've considered living in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's still total, total, totally not out of question. How, how is the English in there? Yeah. Like if I go and speak... Anybody in English will be like uh, almost everyone speaks, but uh, probably they will. They are gonna speak like me, <laughs> but oh no, uh, probably really? better, better. That's really nice. <laughs> yeah, we have it in uh, in the basic uh, education program from uh, from younger ages. So all oh, of us. Yeah. That's good. So <laughs> I can like I won't get lost, or no. if I need to ask. No, no, uh, no you will not uh, only. Okay. They will move you around, <laughs> like that's the good <laughs> part here. And yeah. The only problem is that now with the crisis, um, things are a little harder uh, since the financial problems uh, affect uh, everything well, else. Th- yeah, mm. yeah, that's that's true. But okay, personally, I am on a small city, so it's not uh, a big city like in Athens and stuff. I think they are. It's a little more if I would, chaotic, or something. Yeah, if if I would go, I would like to go to somewhere outside, mm. like, like in Greece, but I don't know, near the bay or or yeah. I don't know somewhere somewhere nice, nice like to the beach. No, yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, every every area is close to either the mountains or the beach, so yeah. it's, it's yeah. very close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's the same uh, in uh, Japan. So you have uh, the seas. Really Not close. really. You'd be you'd be surprised. Um, no. I thought I thought yeah I thought about mm. that. Like right now I live close to the bay, so I'm kind of like super happy. Mm. But um, until now, every time I was here, I haven't really even seen like okay I've seen a couple of rivers, but um, it's it's not so common. Like, if you do see something, then it's when you're crossing a bridge or something, but mm-hmm. uh, it's hard to find, like, huge amount of water <laughs> in front of you, just just like that. Unless you specifically go to the bay, mm-hmm. uh, then then it's quite easy. But, um, or maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I just don't go out enough. And you have been to... People will be like, you know to Mount Fu- Fuji, how will we say that? Fuji, not Fuji. yet. No, not, not yet. Uh, I want to go though. That be cool, yeah. It's, it's like, yeah. Maybe on some spa <laughs> things or hot hot spring, how would they say it? Yeah, the hot springs. <laughs> Those are dodgy. I'm still not comfortable showing my naked body <laughs> yeah. to other people. Mm. Let's see. Um, I heard that dodged dot tool is quite dangerous but then I see that it gave you some nice effects can you like give a small advice about Hold on, it? I'll be right back okay. you can answer it okay. um, Abdel again it goes back to the basics so um, if you know what what result uh, the dot tool will give you 
how it will affect your values and colors, uh, you will find the proper way to, to use it. Um, if you don't, you, you will be confused because you will not know exactly um, the, the effects of it. So it's, it's one of the things we said that after some point you can utilize a lot of different ways to increase the speed of something you would uh, otherwise do manually. Uh, so um, there is not not something not uh, any sp special advice about this. Uh, the, the special advice uh, could be to to really know what what you need to do with uh, the values you want to apply the dots tool uh, on. So I don't know if that answers the question. Probably I'm not sure if I explained that correctly. you can experiment with uh, all the other options of it um, maybe with the shadow the shadow range will affect uh, some certain part of uh, of the value range so you could easily create some fog um, some atmosphere um, uh, maybe I could work out the smoke in that way rather than putting uh, um, a soft brass um, to do that yeah so you have to find out uh, a good use for it so. <laughs> I'm glad you think so Naber but okay Greek uh, classical architecture um, there are some places uh, I guess in every city where you can find uh, such old buildings and stuff um, yeah Abdel no problem just uh, don't think uh, the tool as something special rather than uh, a, a quick way to to do something you would otherwise do manually um, so after you know what you have to do manually proceed into using dodge tool and whatever else you can uh, create any other kind of patterns or something <laughs> lol Kevin you, are, you have lived in uh, Zakynthos if I remember correctly that's a cool place. That's great. I, I have a friend uh, there studying on the University of Corfu. Um, it's, it's a great place. Very beautiful. Well, I I paint almost all day. Uh, I don't think I do stand alone studies, 
uh, I think I have mentioned this before, but I try to do, for example, this one is a part of a study. So I try to apply some things. I have a goal um, on what I try to apply. And uh, that's how I I did all the all the kind all the studying I did uh, these years, uh, doing personal pieces. I mean, okay, let's let's put it down. Uh, collecting information about what I'm searching for, for example, values. Collecting information from several sources, and then to, doing some uh, imaginary pieces to try to apply this. And. Uh, instead of doing copying uh, of uh, other uh, of photographs or stuff without knowing what uh, I'm trying to achieve uh, so since I do imaginary pieces I'll do I, I, would, I do it all day as any 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 time I am painting and it's not about work it's a study piece so Yeah. You can observe uh, photographs or other master paintings to see how the information you you gathered from uh, some theory. Uh, you can try to observe how it applies already in some pieces. Uh, instead of uh, diving directly into drawing something and so you can also spend some time to observe watch a lot of images uh, for example I, you, I see a lot of master sketches um, see how they separate how they what marks they put down um, how how they plan how they did their, their plan their preparation um, instead of copying this drawing that's what I mean instead of copying it try to think what it happens here what it happens here for example we have a nice separation of uh, it's like we have almost the similar uh, kind of material because there is no such uh, powerful indication about the change of material but we have a nice uh, uh, indication of how the form moves and the uh, areas of light and shadow and of occlusion so you have a lot of important information here mm. yeah you can see a lot of stuff and, uh, Just, just avoid uh, mindlessly studying or copying uh, something unless you want to uh, to train your your arm movement I guess anything will do Yeah, exactly. Th that's the you learn what you do. So if you do copying, you will learn copying, copying shapes and stuff. Yeah, th that's the point of having some uh, study goal in your mind. So you can copy an image, but you have to have your mind there. What are you trying to identify? What are you trying to find? by copying this image um, what are the parts of it that you try to understand and so you you will have something as a, a return value you will get something out of it yeah Yeah, you, you can understand the where, when it becomes uh, uh, efficient, w when you learn something. Uh, if, you, if, you ha if you have fight something and you feel like um, you have some notes to put down, that means you have learned something. 
uh, John is away for a while, but uh, I can answer. My favorite artists are most of the best. The my most favorite is uh, Craig Mullins, um, because of uh, both his research spirit on how he experimented, uh, how he learned, uh, um, and uh, his. Uh, how I, I think everything about it, <laughs> even uh, even his personality. And um, other than Craig Mullins, uh, I, Justin Sweet is one of my favorites, uh, along with Van Skovacs and Koskonyotis. Uh, this mostly because I like their style. Um, I, I remember when I first watched, uh, watched images of da Justin Sweet, I think it was in uh, Icewind Dale 2. Um, it really inspired me to to paint fad fantasy stuff and things like that and it was a very unique style <coughs> very expressive also and Cosconiotis uh, I liked very much uh, that dark style um, and I think he also have a lot of influence from Justin Sweet so it's a combination I guess <coughs> That's for me anyway. Of course, I like artists like Jamie Jones and, and all, and more co contemporary artists. But uh, the biggest influences are these ones. And from old masters, Sargent I think is one of my favorites. And uh, I don't know a lot more, I guess. I, I usually prefer to paint it uh, all because uh, um, it allows me to stay con uh, concentrated on the piece rather than trying to fight uh, um, photo textures. But uh, after some point, or uh, if you f if you feel you can uh, you can be faster and reach a result faster by using photo textures, definitely use them but uh, prefer to use them at later stages for example now i could select some uh, nice photo refer photo textures to to apply on uh, this base so i could apply some wood textures here uh, some fabric uh, cloth texture here and it will enhance the whole uh, qu quality without uh, having the the photo texture dictate my work that's that's the important aspect of it so maybe you can take it uh, to 
after a, 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 to a point after a sketch and then try to apply photo textures and do whatever you like. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Hey. Yeah, thanks. Oh, um, yeah. John, you have a question about uh, who are your favorite artists and why? Favorite artists? Yeah. God damn it. That <laughs> question always gets me. I don't know. Mm. I like a lot of artists a lot. Uh, I mean, I guess the, the obvious choice would be Brad Rigney. Mm. Um, like, like I, I say him because like looking and looking at his paintings taught me, you know, a lot. Mm -hmm. And I try to observe everything. Um, I guess some of my stuff will kind of like, mm, yeah, anyway. But um, uh, who else? I like uh, like Bogero a lot. Mm -hmm. Like a lot. Yeah. Really. Um, but I can tell you, hold on, I have a lot of files with artist names who I look at a lot. Um, well, of course, there's, there's uh, old masters, mm -hmm. but um, well, I like a lot Bumsky, um, Chase Stone, Craig Mullins. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this um, this uh, master painter called Edmund Blair Langton. Mm. He did uh, he did fantastic images. I'm not sure if I know uh, him, but uh, I have probably seen some. This, yeah, yeah. Um, like one of his most famous uh, images is like this woman in a white dress mm -hmm. with a sword, kind of like. Like uh, blessing um, a knight that he's kneeling, uh -huh. and she has like a mm -hmm. crown around her. Yeah, it's it's like an old painting. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the Chinese guys, like the Gino Gino guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, really cool. I know. Yeah, him. Gino Gino. That guy is freaking freaking crazy. Uh, Jamie Jones. Uh, I really like. Yeah, and stuff. Well, Zedic, I really freaking love his works. Yeah. Uh, Sergey, uh, Ranja. I, I'm looking at Ranja a lot in terms of how he handles his edges. Mm -hmm. um, he has very, very nice edge control. Um, uh, Tyler Jacobson. Ah, yeah. He's always I been one well. one of my like mm -hmm. heroes, <laughs> kind of. Um, Maniacs. He has yeah. he has really nice. Like I love how easy their their images, like his images, read. Yeah. Um, and basically to finish it off, I really like this Chinese oil painter Nian Situ. You guys should check it out. Um, it's M I A N C two is S I T U. So Mian C two. I will try to find it out later. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, portraits mostly, like uh, figure uh, paintings or stuff. But... No, no, uh -huh. no, no. You should like like check your stuff right now because the dude is a beast. Uh, yes. He usually has like multiple figures doing something. How you say it? But the way like he Mia, Ma. Mian, M I A N, Mian. Yeah. C two S I T U. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Um, Yeah, the guy's really freaking good. Like any Chinese, like the, those crazy Chinese artists, yeah. which is really complex uh, scenes. 
right now, like the main artist I focus on is um, I always forget his name. It's called Alex something. Hold on, I'm gonna find him really quickly. Cause yeah, I gotta show you. Uh, Um, Alex, wait, uh, Alex Alice. Alex Alice. Like, ah, yeah. Al uh, I have Alice. it here in Alex my. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Uh, if I, uh, I have this. Uh, grab. No. Uh, yeah, it, it's, gonna post it's um, it's mostly like a comic artist because I see a lot of uh, I'm not sure exactly what he, what is he working on at this moment but really cool artworks um, yeah I said I, I posted the link like that yeah. image oh my god it's so good like everything about it is just amazing yeah yeah they, they kind of <laughs> folks is really freaking good as well mm. I don't know there's so many really cool yeah. But yeah, like I like Alex. Alex, I'm looking at him a lot mm -hmm. uh, for for everything, really composition and and brushwork. Yeah, well, uh, you find this image from Google uh, or uh... it's on his blog. Uh -huh. I mean, I found it from Google now, but mm. he has it on his blog. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, really great stuff. Yeah. So you know, I'll I'll have like a lot of artists um, that I look a lot into mm -hmm. when I'm trying to get better at something. So Alex Alice, I would look at him because how his uh, works look like very traditional, even though mm -hmm. a lot of it is digital. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, not only. Because he has a lot of yeah, I think he has a great work. experience in uh, non-traditional tools, so he can change both into digital or traditional without any problem. So yeah, 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 exactly. So I'm looking at him because, like, I want my stuff to look a little bit more like, with brushwork. Mm -hmm. um, but still very realistic and like three di three dimensional, but still with brushwork. So it's something I don't know. I'm trying to achieve for a very weird look, but um, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Depending on what I need, I'll look at different yeah exactly different artists. Mm -hmm. You know, like Red Rene. I was looking at his stuff a lot because of his values. Yeah, it's and crazy. The way he does c cinematic. Uh, mm. Lighting set. And I think the Chase Stone, how I can remember the name. It's a, si yeah, it's a similar is... st style. So Chase, Chase Stone, I always say this like, Chase Stone is red reading, but simpler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I, that's not a bad thing. Like, it's just, you know, the amount of details that go into it, it's, it's much more simple. Mm. Um, if I have to put like what I'm trying to achieve uh, and I have to pick an artist that probably would be Red Rigne mm -hmm. with a mix of Rangia yeah. and w whatever whatever is born from that that's basically what I'm working towards so but all it translates to is you know three dimensionality like realistic and like three dimensional, but have a really nice uh, yeah. painterly uh, uh, brushwork. Uh, Ruan Jia Finding has the balance. Uh, really great edge work also, so it's uh, yeah, crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, he has super good edge work. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You, you, you never have just that one. Well, you might, actually. 
But still. Uh, who did you say? Who was your favorite? Um, no, I... I don't know, you mean uh, I, I haven't said anything. <laughs> oh, you, you didn't say... I thought this was this question was already okay. asked. Who are your favorite? Yeah. Ah, what, what artist I, did I answer? Sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, well, okay. I, I I didn't mention uh, a lot of them, but uh, the main ones like uh, Craig Mullins, uh, and for me that uh, it is uh, Justin Sweet, Van Kovacs, and Koskonyotis. Yeah. Although yeah, yeah, yeah. lately it might uh, not seem that I have uh, some influence from them, from Justin Sweet and Van Kovacs, but uh, their style stays with me because I like it very much. And uh, mm, I guess the, the similarity with Cosconiotis can be found in uh, the dark, uh, the dark style that I like in his works. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can definitely see that. Yeah, but okay. Unfortunately, some clients don't like. It. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, it's a very. Um, it's a very personal, mm. not very commercial style. Yeah. Like commercially, everything gotta be readable, yeah. which means a lot of it can't be too dark or a lot of it can't be too light. So, mm. you know, I gotta find a, a nice balance. Exactly. But um, but it's like as a personal taste, it's very good. Mm. I, I like it. Yeah, Abdel, that's uh, his reflection like a mirror or something. And I, <laughs> but okay, I I'm I have done it like uh, on a rough way. Uh, no, maybe in uh, older times, like uh, when I didn't knew all these uh, fundamentals and stuff, it it was a little harder for me. Uh, but uh, clients um, are, are not necessarily like hard to work with. It it depends, I guess. Um, some clients may ask for more, and while they pay less, so it can be a little tiring for you. Um, but <laughs> yeah, that that happened to me anyway. But, uh, <laughs> But I guess overall I there, mean, there is no problem. <laughs> it, uh, mm, I don't know. Like each client has their own freaking vision mm. of things. So like whenever you start with a client, unless it clicks right away, you kind of like have to work into it and kind of they don't they won't say it. So you you will have to, to figure, figure it out. out. Yeah. Yeah, to figure out what, what they like and, and uh, you know, what their vision is. So, yeah, sometimes communication is very hard. Yeah. You can say one thing and you think it means something, but something completely different. Sometimes they ask for stuff, <laughs> but you don't know what it means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, you'll get used to kind of decoding what they want. Yeah, after some point. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what I found, like, why it's hard, uh, you know, like I said, each, each person has their own vision, so that's perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. But they should show more examples of when they say something. Yeah. Like, if they want you... When, when they say like, "Oh, can you make it more clear or more polished?" That's that's just a silly example, but yeah, you know, they I, should show an image. I really like either this, from your uh, own. Yeah, these clients that do exactly this thing uh, you are mentioning about, 
uh, that uh, they send you a whole reference file uh, exactly the, the the stuff you should avoid the stuff you should follow and it makes the whole uh, image in your mind to be clearer and so you have a, um, a clear goal to to achieve and it makes the work easier for you less guessing so you are more sure of what you, what exactly. you have to do yeah exactly mm. basically the less guesswork you mm. do the better like the easier it is for the clients yeah so um, unfortunately there's still a lot of yeah. like there's more more than not mm -hmm. uh, clients who don't know what they want or won't even bother to show an image yeah um, I, I guess some some of them can be I guess the problem is when some someone doesn't explain properly and then has uh, has something to criticize about the result and yeah yeah without yeah, yeah, yeah. noticing that it's it's his uh, uh, the lack of information he provided uh, that caused you to overwork something or I don't know what um, exactly yeah but I guess exactly. there are some clients that can uh, that can leave you more free on that aspect so no problem at that in in these cases anyway <coughs> Yeah, in this case you don't have nothing to worry about because yeah. they'll accept just about anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when Apple bought his CD like that. <laughs> Not yeah. anymore. Yeah, but no. mm -hmm. I guess they have to follow more strict lines uh, now. Yeah, uh, they don't have to. They chose to. Anyway. Like for example, the client I'm working on right now, it's really easy to work with them. Like there's no guesswork. Mm -hmm. uh, if they want something or if they want to change, first of all, they'll tell you why. And second of all, they'll always attach a reference, mm -hmm. uh, either by you know finding it or actually have one of their artists do kind of like a paint over Make like and a, show uh -huh. exactly. That's cool. Yeah. Mm. That's like first of all, it's rare, of course. Yeah. Like, not everybody has that possibility, but uh, I really like it, and I'm super enjoying working with them because. I know what they want, yeah. and what they want is what I want as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah. When there's no guesswork and everything is clear, then you'll have a good day exactly. working with clients. Yeah. The last thing you want is go a direction, and then you'll be like, oh no, that's not what I was imagining. Mm -hmm. And you have to draw reprints John I saw your live stream of this amazing painting of a girl with a dragon but I can find it on the A yeah, I posted it with a dragon on her shoulder I posted it on the A yeah so you have been in this uh, perma noob uh, noobs forum or you have started the sketchbook there? <laughs> I did, but I haven't done in any studies mm. uh, yet. But yeah. I, I am, because I've been just so freaking busy. Yeah, that's but I, I am going to start studying mm. on new month. I'm going to yeah. start posting stuff. I will also try at some point to join. We'll see. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Ah, the one with the big dragon behind. That's because I haven't posted it. Um, uh, I need to... I, I want to post it, but 
I need to clean it up more, and I haven't found time to clean it up. Because I don't think it's <laughs> it's good enough to, to like post it. Not yet, at least. No, I got a lot to do. I got a lot of, a lot of things to do. But, um, yeah, mainly I want to focus on going back to studying. There's a lot of things I want to experiment and practice, but I just don't have time. Yeah, well, that's a nice feeling. Um, where you, uh, when you reach that point that uh, it is very enjoyable to go and try new stuff and... Uh, you, you say, for example, oh, damn, I can't go to bed now. I want to stay late and try things. Any, any free time you have, you want to yeah. try out new things. It's great. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, that's exactly it. But, well, yeah, it's been a very busy month, but not complaining. Busy is good, but, yeah. I want to keep evolving and you know, like do big jumps and try a lot of things to make make my life easier as an artist. Yeah, like right now, the main thing I'm trying to figure out is like the amount of like. Uh, the amount of ha uh, painterly my my image will be like that's something I'm still figuring out because mm -hmm. there's no one artist that I've seen that is like perfect to to what I have in my head, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just I just need to practice and try. Like, I'll do some paintings that they have very broad brush strokes, which makes them a lot more painterly. Mm -hmm. But other ones, it's finer, finer brush strokes. Like, they're still there. It's just that they're very, yeah, they, they are very so, fine. Yeah, exactly. Fine. They are more fine, smaller in size. Uh, so. Yeah, the, the size. Yeah, exactly. The good thing with uh, going like doing painterly strokes and stuff is also they create some uh, happy accidents if we can call them like that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I guess the the old masters uh, were uh, were using at their adv at their advantage the the texture uh, that the brass could create and the. Uh, the motion, the flow, uh, the, uh, how can I explain that? I mean, the digital tool is all right. It has a lot of flexibility and stuff, but it is very accurate. It is like you put down the stroke, the computer uh, reads it. And, but in the, in the brush, in the traditional brush, you, have, you can make more mistakes. And so they, fi they found a way to utilize these mistakes in their own advantage. Um, but in the digital, we have to find a way to create something similar, so... Um, That's why I use a lot of smudge too. Mm. Yeah, it you push things to... yeah, around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you get bored yeah, of... Yeah, it really uh, allows me to have these ex happy accidents as well. Quite mm -hmm. easily. Yeah. We have a question. Uh, do you get bored of painting so many details? Because yeah, I think I would go mad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe at some point uh, you become bored. But uh, I felt that this happened a lot when I when it took me a lot more time to create a good base. Um, the more time I, the faster I can make a base, the more time I can uh, easily spend on uh, adding details. So. I don't know. Of course, after some point, I can get bored. So I don't know. Like uh, I know what what she's saying. Mm -hmm. um, 
personally, if you really look into my paintings, oh, which you can't, obviously, because I, I never pull them high res enough. Mm. But if you'd be able to, it's everything is super loose. I became, I guess I became good at pretending that there's a lot of details mm -hmm. when there's really not. It's like a lot of it is, is a lot of uh, two value brush strokes, really, light and dark. Just that the shapes of both light and dark create the illusion. There's a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think that also lets space to the imagination of the viewer to fill in some details of his own, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. I became very good at pretending because <laughs> I'm always like pressing for time uh, to create. You know, as good paintings as I can with the shortest amount of time. Um, so I, I kind of became good at, or good enough to uh, fool the eye, mm -hmm. which was unintentional, but I'm just trying to find ways, like cheats, to kind of yeah. make something look the way it was that quick. Yeah, I don't think they they are exactly cheats or something, but uh, you no, find not, you yeah. find the better ways to to apply. Sorry, you find better ways to apply the knowledge you have. So you create some patterns, some methods to increase that application. So it's not that you try to hide uh, that you don't know how to do something, but you find a, a faster way to to do it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah Abdel. <laughs> yeah, for example, here I have done a silhouette that I have no idea I, even if I did it correctly to to indicate a, a female character or something. I don't know, but I'm not gonna add any details in that. <laughs> so, Just a bit blank. suggesting something. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna stay here much longer. It's yeah, me. Two, yeah. How many hours it's been? <laughs> uh, we're on the call for about yeah, one and a half hours. Yeah. So, and oh, yeah, I was out as well for a while. Mm. But, um, yeah, I guess uh, in a few minutes we can call mm -hmm. it over for now. <laughs> yeah, mm. you can always do it again. Yeah. Uh, it was my first time combining, uh, like, I didn't knew you can be in Skype and together. <coughs> I think you did the same with uh, Thea Turner. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's cool. yeah, exactly. Mm. So, what time is it uh, there in Japan? 2 so, yeah. Wow. So it's been late. Nah, I'm still gonna keep painting, but mm -hmm. just need to focus yeah. and uh, take a break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to finish. Yeah, it's pretty close to finish. Yeah, I'm just focusing mainly on the character and the animals and stuff will be good. Yeah, so you are I, somehow on, to, yeah, you are on the sketching stage right now. No, 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 mm -hmm. no, no, no. I'm already way, way beyond yeah. sketching. I'm more on the f finishing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think I'll post uh, a sneak peek soon. I always like doing that, just like showing the crop, see what people say. Which is usually like, you suck, John. <laughs> Lots. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy people have been liking my stuff. Even though, like, I was very scared. Because, mm. you know, and usually my, my stuff is looking like more cleaner and cleaner and more tighter and tighter. And then suddenly I'm like, I want to do. I want to have brush strokes in my mm. paintings, but that's not the kind of stuff I, I have. Yeah, I guess um, 
some people like uh, images that uh, contain a lot of details and uh, not being very suggesting like with uh, brush strokes and stuff but uh, yeah. yeah I think either it's good uh, right. yeah both are good and this is the thing I love both mm -hmm. my problem right now is and I, I'm guessing it's going to take a while until I settle on something uh, like I was saying like my problem right now is to find a middle ground yeah Like I want to have brush strokes. Mm -hmm. I want to have some lost edges, but I still want it to be very refined. Yeah, so it's it's very hard. Yeah, finding that balance is uh, always the the tricky part. So good I luck on that. <laughs> yeah, sooner or later, I guess uh, you're gonna find out your own preferred way to combine this. So. Like I said, I just need time to test. Yeah, like do exactly. like very quick paintings and mm -hmm. like have a few variations and see which one I enjoy the most and which one I like usually the most. <laughs> My tutorial? I don't know. Sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, I guess uh, we can wrap it up here. Yeah, let's go. Uh, thank you. Th this was a great live stream. <laughs> a nice experience. <laughs> thank you for, yeah, thanks, for coming. Thanks for uh, having me. We'll okay. talk more times. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. And see you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>